the so, Tanisha, today the European Central Bank is expected to raise interest rates by another half a percentage point, bringing it up to 2.5%. And for somebody on a mortgage of €200,000, this would mean that the repayments would increase by over €3,000 per year. And this will have an immediate impact on the 194,000 customers' households who have tracker mortgages. For those on variable rates or those who, whose fixed rates are due to expire, their fate lies with the banks and whether they decide uh, in the coming months to pass this interest rate on. Now, we've repeatedly made our position clear in Sinn Féin, uh, and I repeated that the banks should absorb these interest rates in the interest of their customers. They are profitable, they've increased market share, and they've paid out dividends to their shareholders already this year. Not only that, they are uniquely positioned to profit on the back of rising interest rates, and they shouldn't. They should do the right thing, and I would ask that you, on behalf of government, would echo that call. Tanish, in October, I asked uh, you and your government to examine options to introduce a targeted, tailored and time-bound mortgage interest relief for struggling mortgage borrowers who are and will face sharp increases in terms of interest hikes. So, can you clarify if the government has taken, undertaken any of this work? Uh, as you know, there is another cohort of borrowers who are now at the sharp edge of interest rate hikes. Over the past number of years, tens of thousands of borrowers have had their mortgages sold off by the banks to vulture funds. And for years, we've had government minister after government minister telling this doll, indeed telling these same borrowers and the public that vulture funds offered the same protection and safeguards to mortgage holders as the banks. Tanish, do you yourself at the time of the issue of uh, permanent TSB selling their split mortgage loans to, to, to a vulture fund? You told the doll, you told homeowners, you assured them that they would be no worse off. Now, I never bought this line, and now more than ever, the truth is laid bare. Vulture funds, Tanisha, are aggressively hiking rates higher and faster than the banks. One borrower wrote to us, a mother of three, she told us how her interest rate has increased by, from pepper from 3.7% to 6.4%. Her monthly repayments have been hiked by over €300 Euro per month. That's over €3,500 per year, more in interest alone that she has to pay. And that's before the interest goes up today again by the ECB. She's rightly said that this wouldn't be the case if she remained with permanent TSB. Another borrower wrote to us, another Piper customer, his mortgage loan was sold by permanent TSB, whose interest rate has been hiked from 4.5% to 6.5%. In his own words, this is a sentence we have been served by these vultures. How are we supposed to sustain this? Factor in the cost of living crisis uh, and our two kids. We are very worried about the future. And again, Tanish, the ECB interest rate hike will put that individual's interest on their mortgage at 7% and some others at over 7%. And there are thousands more. There are 100,000 people who've had their mortgage sold off to Vulture. So this puts to bed any notions that Vulture Fund treat borrowers in the same way as banks do. So I would ask you, do you accept that these borrowers... Uh, who had their loans sold to vulture funds are now in a worse position in relation to the interest rate hikes? And will the government commit to examining options for a target tailored and time bound mortgage interest relief? And can I ask you what actions will your government take as more and more families are likely to face repayment difficulties in the months ahead? Thanks, um, thanks very much, Deputy. Uh, we, we understand that the ECB will make an announcement in relation to interest rates today. Uh, we don't know what the announcement is going to be, but it is anticipated that there will be a further increase uh, in interest rates announced. Um, and we hope that it is the last one, or if not the last one, hopefully uh, the second last one. Um, as the Deputy will appreciate, uh, the ECB is independent in its functions, um, and it has a particular remit to bring inflation under control, to bring inflation uh, down to something around 2%, and that is the reason uh, why interest rates uh, are being increased by the central bank, to bring inflation under control. 
Um, but obviously this is going to be extremely unwelcome news for um, mortgage holders uh, and indeed other borrowers who will see the cost of their repayments rise and that's coming at a time when the cost of everything is rising uh, and I know it's going to be uh, very unwelcome news and very difficult for a lot of families and uh, other borrowers uh, in the period ahead. Um, to answer your questions, Deputy, we don't have any plans at present to reintroduce mortgage interest relief. Uh, it did exist in the past, um, but existed, uh, generally speaking, at a time when interest rates were much higher than even they are now. Uh, it's not something we rule out for the future, um, but there are no current plans uh, to do so, and it would involve reopening the budget and all of the consequences that would uh, derive from that. Um, when it comes to variable interest rates, uh, it is a commercial decision of the banks and other lenders uh, to set variable rates, um, and they will have taken into account a number of factors. Um, when interest rates go up, uh, the cost of borrowing for banks goes up as well, um, because banks get a lot of their finance from the ECB, and also there could be an impact on deposit rates too. Uh, but certainly my message to the banks uh, is that they shouldn't use rising interest rates uh, as an opportunity to increase profit margins, um, and that is the message uh, that we will convey uh, to the banks um, with regard to uh, interest rates. And it had been the case uh, for a very long time that interest rates paid by Irish borrowers were very much higher than the European average, and we have seen that narrow in recent months uh, because a lot of the banks haven't passed on the increases. Um, and I think that is, uh, that is welcome. Uh, when it comes to funds, Deputy, I'll have to talk to the Minister of Finance about that and come back to you. My understanding is that uh, when loans transfer, when mortgages transfer, the contractual terms uh, remain the same, that they can't be changed unilaterally, uh, provided the person um, adheres to the contract. Um, the, 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 the lender has to honour the contract, but what you're saying to me is that perhaps that's not the case. Uh, and certainly if you have individual cases, our examples, I'd be happy to examine them and uh, take it up with the Minister of Finance for further examination. Honestly, the funds aren't breaking the contract. This, the funds always had the ability to do it, just like the banks have the ability to pass on interest rate hikes, which they're not doing because they've long-term interests. The funds have no such interest. That's why it should never have been allowed that family homes are in the hands of vulture funds. Now, we have people who, after today, are going to get another letter, the fourth letter, since the summer, saying that their interest rate on their mortgage has increased again. For people, that is going to put now an, an extra €4,000 on interest in the repayment of their mortgage. For many, many families, that tips them over the edge. You know, it, for families, when they're sitting down at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether it's €4,000 to heat your home or €4,000 to keep a roof over your head. It's money that they have to find somewhere. And there is a need now. There's a particular need now to really examine the issue of mortgage interest relief that can be tailored, that can look at the increase that we're seeing, which is brought on from inflation, which is brought on as a result in the main uh, by the war in Ukraine and the issues in terms of energy and so on. And therefore, just like other one-off measures in terms of time-bound measures, we need to look at a re at relief for uh, interest rate holders, for mortgage holders in relation to a spike, a huge spike in terms of interest that they're facing right now. There are people that are facing into Christmas that don't know how they're going to meet January's mortgage bill and I really think the government need to intervene. So I would encourage you, I heard what you've said and I'm finishing this here, that you, you haven't ruled it out completely, but I would encourage you to at least examine options. We've prepared options with the Office of the Budgetary, uh, the Budgetary Office here in the Oireachtas. We're happy to, to, to share them with the Minister for finance, and I would encourage you to take action on this matter. Yeah, thanks, um, thanks, Deputy. I, I absolutely appreciate that uh, interest rates going up um, will be very unwelcome for um, tens, if not hundreds, of thousands of families across the country. And those with tracker mortgages, for example, uh, will receive that letter, the fourth letter, uh, in only a few months, um, telling them that their repayments are going up. And the same will apply to people on variable rates, and that is uh, not welcome. Uh, as you'll appreciate, the ECB. Uh, makes these decisions independently of European governments, is doing so in an effort to bring down inflation, which, if successful, will be a benefit to everyone. Um, but that's of no consolation uh, to people who are seeing uh, their repayments rise and rise very sharply uh, over the last couple of months. Um, we passed a budget in this House uh, only a few weeks ago, um, and that didn't include um, uh, the reduction of mortgage interest relief. Um, as you noted, it's not something we're going to rule out. It did exist in the past when interest rates were, generally speaking, much higher. We'll be happy to look at any proposals you have, um, but I don't want to raise false expectations. You know, the budget was only agreed recently. We've only just signed off on the finance bill, and to reopen um, the question of the public finances after only a few weeks 
actually before the budget even comes into effect, I think, would have other consequences that we'd have to consider.